The UN Decade of Healthy Ageing is an unprecedented opportunity to work together to improve the lives of older people, their families and their communities. To make the decade a success though, we will all need to access different types of knowledge in different ways. My name is Jane Barrett and I'm the Secretary General of the International Federation on Ageing and very pleased to be your host today for this online event and roundtable discussion. This event, which launches the platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Ageing, is intended to be a conversation about knowledge exchange and most importantly, collaboration to foster healthy ageing. Please use the Zoom Q&A function to ask questions, which will be answered both in writing or during the round table today, discussion by our panelists. Please feel free to have conversations in the chat room with other, con with other participants and using the chat function. If you are joining us via Twitter or YouTube, you can also join the conversation by sending us your comments live or using the hashtag, adding life to years. To, ki to kick off the event, let's hear from Dr. Etienne Krug, Director of the Department for Social Determinants of Health, World Health Organization for a brief welcome. The floor is yours, Etienne. Thanks so much, Jane, and uh, good morning or good afternoon, good evening to all of you. It's a real privilege to welcome you all to this English launch of the online multilingual knowledge exchange platform. Tomorrow and the day after, we'll have other launches in uh, other languages, and therefore, I'm so excited to see hundreds of you already joining today for this English event. We're here today because the UN General Assembly declared 2021-2030, the decade of healthy aging. And unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a stark reminder of the importance of health in older age. WHO was asked to lead the decade collaboration, bringing together governments, civil society, the private sector, media, UN agencies, and of course, older people themselves to foster longer and healthier lives. And as the WHO Director General, Dr. Tedros said in a commentary to be published later today in Nature Aging, it will take knowledge to transform the world to be a better place to grow older. With support from all six WHO regional offices and with inputs from many of you stakeholders across sectors, disciplines, regions, and languages from over 80 countries, we have developed the first ever online interactive platform that facilitates knowledge sharing and collaboration on healthy aging. The platform supports the decade by enabling you and other stakeholders to find, share and produce the knowledge you will need to foster healthy aging in collaboration with peers, professional experts and more. And the decade provides the framework for the knowledge exchange platform, the vehicle, so that together we can really transform our world to be a better place to grow older. So welcome to all, looking forward to an exciting event. Back to you, Jane. And thank you very much, uh, Etienne. You know, as you've said, the decade's collaborative vision includes not only sectors and disciplines, but also regions and languages. You know, I'd like to pick up on a couple of words that you said, though. You know, you talked about knowledge to transform the world to a better place. And could I suggest not only do we need knowledge, but we also need action at regional levels. The development of the Decade Knowledge Exchange platform would not have been possible without the support of the WHO regional offices. And they're critically important, you know, not only to the knowledge sharing, but the execution of the decade. I'm honoured to welcome our WHO regional directors who are joining us via video today to offer a few remarks. Thank you very much. It is with great pleasure that I participate in the launch of the Knowledge Exchange Platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Aging. The Western Pacific region has one of the largest and fastest growing older population in the world. As people live longer, 
the society can benefit from more older people with experience, skills, and knowledge working and contributing as employees, investors, consumers, caregivers, or volunteers. However, to capture this opportunity, the society needs to transform itself to become age-friendly and support older people to stay healthy and continue social participation. Since this social transformation is unprecedented, there is no best practice. Countries need to experiment different options and learn from each other's experience. Aged countries can learn from new initiatives and innovations from younger countries, while younger countries can inform their policies and programs based on past experience of aged countries. I welcome the launch of this platform, the first global knowledge base on healthy aging. I look forward to the exchange of knowledge and innovation across countries and opportunities to learn from each other. The platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Aging delivers a global good that is central to enabling older people to be and do what they value. That good is knowledge. The knowledge of communities, of caregivers, of policymakers, and of older people themselves working to enhance their health and well-being in a diverse range of settings and with access to a diverse range of resources. By contributing to the platform, stakeholders from across the Southeast Asia region and the world can empower one another, leveraging best practices, data and training to meet the unique health needs of older people whatever their requirements and whatever community they come from. Because the future we want for present and coming generations is a future in which all people of all wages can fulfill their potential in dignity and equality, leaving no one behind. The new platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Aging is a unique opportunity for everyone in the European region to work together across sectors to improve the lives of older people. In the spirit of our European Program of Work, EPW, United Action for Better Health, we will promote knowledge sharing across our four flagship initiatives to protect older people's mental health, increase their access to vaccination, improve their digital literacy and understand behavioral factors. These initiatives and the new platform will help us create a world in which all people can live long, healthy lives. Greetings, friends in the Americas and around the world. Through our technical cooperation and advocacy efforts, PAHO continues to demonstrate our commitment to improve the lives of older persons. Because of this, we have been hard at work for years on the Decade of the Healthy Aging, which will be launched officially on October 1st, the International Day of Older Persons. Today, we are launching the Decade's Healthy Aging platform, which will be the main space to collaborate, share knowledge, and connect key stakeholders all over the world to work towards healthy aging. Sharing best practices and experiences can improve efficiency and inspire actions from the local level up. I encourage countries and territories in the region of the Americas to actively join the movement for the decade of healthy aging by learning together and connecting with other actors through the platform. To foster the implementation of the decade of healthy aging, we need to engage decision makers, older people, their family members, caregivers, experts, and communities. 
The new digital platform for healthy aging is an essential resource for exchanging experiences, building knowledge, and harnessing wisdom for positive change. I urge all our colleagues and partners to use it. The regional directors today have talked with one voice. You know, they've talked about uniting across sectors, across disciplines. They've talked about social transformation. They've talked about learning together and exchanging and learning from one another, the new to the old and the old to the new. We thank the WHO regional directors for their strong collective calls for increased collaboration and exchange and learning to improve the lives of older people, their families and their communities. And they are calling on us, each and every one of us on this platform today, but going beyond that. Today, we are also very privileged to host an interactive multi-sectoral roundtable discussion with representatives from the governments of Japan, Finland, the United Nations Habitat, Help Age International, the World Economic Forum, and the Cochrane Campbell Global Aging Partnership. The full bios will be posted in this event's chat. For IFA, you know, this event and the platform opens the possibilities like never before in my lifetime or in your lifetime to not only work across sectors and disciplines, but build sustainable relationships to help influence and shape policy. We will now be hearing from our roundtable participants one by one, and each of them have three minutes. To listen to their initial thoughts on knowledge sharing for healthy ageing from the perspective of countries, the United Nations, civil society, the private sector and academia. To start with, we are very privileged to have with us today Dr. Teja Taki, Assistant Minister for Global Health and Welfare, Ministry of Health, Labour and Welfare in Japan. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I feel honoured to make uh, my presentation today. And I'm going to give us a quick update on the community-based integrated care system, as well as other uh, countermeasures in Japan. The aging of Japan's population is advancing at a pace that is incomparable to other countries. Currently, of the total population, the older people aged 65 and over account for about 29%. And the older people aged 75 and over account for about 15%. These numbers are expected to increase in the future. Along with the demand for medical care and long-term care, an increase in dementia is also expected. For this reason, Japan is promoting the community-based integrated care system to support the older people to maintain their health and the dignity and the live independently so that older people can continue to live their own lives in their family, familiar communities as long as they wish. In Japan, there is a community activity called Dementia Support Caravan. Dementia supporters who have a proper understanding of dementia watch over their neighbors and help those in need. Training courses for dementia supporters are held in local communities. And in one case, school students who took the course at school are able to prevent a dementia patient from missing. In this way, Japan is working to create an environment and a society that can support the daily lives of people with dementia. Japan has been disseminating its knowledge on aging society to the world. Japan has committed active cooperation to achieve healthy aging with countries in UPRO region when the Regional Action Plan on Healthy Aging in the Western Pacific was adopted at the 2020 w, uh, UPRO Regional Conference. 
In terms of bilateral cooperation, Japan contributed to the development of community-based integrated care services in Thailand through a technical cooperation project of JICA. The Dementia Supporter Caravan initiative shared with the UK has been adopted as a Dementia Friends, which is a UK style project for capacity building for dementia supporters. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Dr. Taki. You know, what you've really demonstrated today is some of the fundamental actions of the decade in your talk about the dementia caravans and integrated care. You know, thinking about long-term care as one of the key action areas and also primary integrated care. So we thank you and your government and the people of Japan for their leadership in this important area of healthy aging. I would now like to move on and give the floor next to Dr. Vele Miko Niemi, Director General for the Department of Communities and Functional Abilities in Finland for another valuable perspective from the point of a national government. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much and uh, dear friends around the globe. Prolonged life expectancy globally is a success story of improving health and well-being in past decades. That is in itself a good example of how knowledge can be used successfully. The aging of the population is a phenomenon that requires long-term and cross-administrative development. <clears throat> in order to address the challenges and make, up, uh, make use of the opportunities, we need to use a lot of different information and data, both quantitative and qualitative. Finland has a long tradition of data registries, such as population and death, care and service, and patient and client censuses. Patient or client information is primarily stored in the national in infrastructure for health and social care data, so-called Kanta services. Centralized services and securely stored massive amounts of health and social care data serve as a good basis for knowledge management. This has been made possible with the introduction of the Act on the, the secondary use of health and social data in 2019. Population-based surveys provide information on health and well-being. They include indicators for evaluating both performance and use of the health and social services from a citizen's perspective. A study on the perceived quality of care among clients in home and 24-7 hour care for older people was conducted in 2016. We are planning a regular national survey on perceived quality of care for elderly service users and their relatives. The data used for unit level benchmarking is based on a residence assessment instrument, RAI system. RAI assessments of clients in the units include information on care needs, functional abilities, as well as health and medical issues. The use of RAI assessment system will become mandatory in 2023. Finland has participated in the preparation of the baseline document uh, for this WHO decade of healthy aging. Finland's national case study for the baseline report seeks to describe how data and information are used in Finland to drive decisions to improve the lives of older people. Finland supports a global joint platform for sharing information and knowledge on healthy aging. As an example of knowledge sharing, Finland organized a global conference on the silver economy during our presidency of the European Union in 2019. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Dr. Niemi. You know, at the heart of your statement is the absolute critical importance of data and data and research being one of the enablers of the UN Decade of Healthy Aging. And so we look forward to not only your leadership in your country, but being able to translate and transform, you know, data into meaningful advocacy, because as civil society, that's one of the, the real Achilles heels for us. So thank you. We now have the very great privilege of hearing from Ms. Angela Mwe, Chief of Human Rights and Social Inclusion at UN Habitat, headquartered in Nairobi. The floor is yours, madam. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for this invitation and congratulations 
for the knowledge exchange platform. UN Habitat is a UN agency leading on issues of sustainable urban development, and that is a custodian of SDG 11, making cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And at UN Habitat, we have six cross-cutting issues, which are human rights, gender, youth, children, all the persons and people with disabilities. And we have a, a cross-cutting theme on safety. So as 57% of the older persons, that is people over 60, live in urban settlements, Interventions to make urban spaces, that is cities and towns, sustainable for older people is critical. The interventions are inclusive of care facilities, housing, economic opportunities, health coverage, etc., and require a participatory and co-design approach from all stakeholders. Allow me to share a few ideas on the importance of knowledge sharing from our point of view. It is important to destigmatize aging and vulnerabilities that are attached uh, to old age through knowledge sharing. Modalities of sharing should be intersectionality, intersectional, taking into consideration gender, disabilities, sociocultural and political uh, inequalities. And you know, no, COVID-19 reminded us just how high these inequalities are when we saw the response to COVID-19 that many, many groups were excluded. Knowledge sharing should be equitable. It should take account of every group and factor in the different uh, needs for different people. For example, from a gender perspective, aging women face issues and are often more in a worse condition or a situation than men when it comes to access to control over family resources, decision-making, et cetera. Gender and age inequalities are not distinct and the intersection of the two need attention. The same applies to migrants, displaced persons and refugees. It has also been found that the progression of disease um, amongst older migrants, life course, is more frequently negatively influenced by disadvantaged socioeconomic status. The logistics of knowledge sharing should be inclusive of language sect, uh, sector, uh, communication barriers to include all people. Knowledge on community building can result in age-friendly cities, which is uh, advanced by the World Health Organization. And it brings together uh, people from different age groups. In 2020, UN Habitat launched the Global Future Cities Knowledge Platform to exchange knowledge on sustainable and inclusive urban development. It's a web-based platform, and perhaps that we, we can actually share uh, knowledge across the two platforms and we can uh, learn from one another. Um, it has three pillars, urban planning, which includes spatial planning, transport and other basic services, and resilience, of course, to human disasters, including climate action. The new urban agenda, which was launched in 2016 in Quito, um, contributes to enablers um, of uh, the UN uh, decade of healthy aging through four things, just to end, explicit inclusion of older persons in human rights and inclusion dimension, address stigma faced by older persons in urban setups and measures taken to compound the challenge, such as we saw in the COVID-19 pandemic. Inclusion of older persons um, and the organizations that work with older persons for need assessment. We need to work together and committing to both age inclusive physical infrastructure, adaptive, adapt, adaptive interventions and the social infrastructure. At UN Habitat, we believe that we need to leave no one and no place behind. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Ms. Moy. You know, at the heart of what you were saying, you know, is this intersectionality of older people and younger people across the generations, but with gender, social determinants of health, et cetera. So I'm sure that we look forward to, you know, understanding how the platforms can actually exchange knowledge and those in the field of the decade of healthy aging can make meaningful partnerships with you and your colleagues going forward. So thank you. It's now my great pleasure to turn to colleague, Ms. Caitlin Littleton healthy aging portfolio team lead for Help Age International, who will speak from the point of view of older people and civil society, keeping in mind that one of the enablers of the decade of healthy aging is voices. So Caitlin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jane. Yes, representing the 1 billion older people in all civil society is a big task, but I'm drawing from our many decades of experience working with partners and with older people for this um, intervention. I'd like to start by thanking the WHO for investing in the de development of this platform and creating a space which recognizes the importance of multi-sectoral learning and collaboration. 
We all know that too often knowledge, resources, and even decision-making are shared in a top-down way. This is problematic for many reasons, not least because we know from our work with network members, partners, and older people themselves in low and middle income countries, that they have a great wealth of experience, knowledge, learning, resources, and are innovators, and older people everywhere can benefit from what they have to share. We encourage other sectors to look to civil society as a key resource and partner in knowledge development and in collaboration. It is our hope that this platform will facilitate that multi-sectoral collaboration on the action areas, especially within countries and in communities where the needed change must be realized. We can't have this end at the global level, but we really need to be sure that we're developing up those um, in-country partnerships. To that end, we will encourage our network and our partners and everyone we work with to use this platform and to share what they're doing and learning. I'd like to emphasize that the success of this decade hinges on the commitment of everyone engaged to ensure that older people themselves are guiding and shaping the actions that are taken. The phrase, nothing about us without us, which is popularized by the disability movement, is a powerful concept here too, and one that needs to be deeply embedded in the work of all engaged on the decade. Older people from Tanzania to Jordan to Venezuela to Vietnam tell us that they value being treated fairly, with respect and dignity, making their own decisions and having their voices heard. Older people have the right to be engaged, informed and empowered, to exercise and amplify their voices and to be heard by those with power and to be able to affect change. There is as much diversity in later life as at any age, if not more. So it's important that we don't accept tokenistic representation, but consider whose voice might be left out and to seek to put those farthest behind first in the design of all the work of the decade. Are we including in consultations and in data and research, those who are 90 as well as 60? Are we including women and men and people of other genders, those who have all variety of health conditions and levels of intrinsic capacity and functioning? Have we considered diversity of context and socioeconomic situations? Our work on voice of older people has revealed many barriers and challenges to meaningful engagement. We know that even when governments and others set out to include older people, the end result can fall short. Sometimes this is because of a gap in mechanisms to engage the voice of older people. So we hope that the work of the decade will also lead to investment in and support for older people's associations and other membership-based groups of older people. HealthAge and our network has worked with older people around the world to develop a voice framework, training toolkit, and several reports which unpack the practical how and what of voice work. This October on the International Day of Older People will also be launching a set of tools that focus on addressing systemic ageism. I'll share these in the chat box as well as on the platform. We look forward to working with all of you over the coming decade and hope that this platform will become a vibrant community of shared learning and collaboration, deeply rooted in listening and responding to older people. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Caitlin, for being with us today. Can I just remind us all that the statements that have been presented, you know, from Etienne, from the WHO regional directors, from governments of Finland, Japan, um, we've heard from the United Nations and civil society. And it really is about for us to reach across the aisles to others and not wait. And so we need to be in the driving seat of this decade, along with disciplines and sectors. I'd like to remind all of us today to keep sending in questions and reactions to the Zoom, the um, statements and the Q&A function, which will feed into our roundtable discussion. And we have another couple of statements which are vitally important and really reflect, you know, all sectors and disciplines coming to the table. So next, I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Kelly McCain, Head of Healthcare Initiatives at the World Economic Forum, who will speak on knowledge sharing for healthy ageing from the point of view of the public-private cooperation. The floor is yours, Kelly. Thank you so much, Jane, and I'm very pleased to receive this invitation. As the International Institution for Public-Private Cooperation, the World Economic Forum is committed to working with our network of multi-sectoral stakeholders and our Global Future Council on Healthy Aging and Longevity to raise awareness and shape action on the healthy aging agenda through the generation and dissemination of learnings and insights in line with the goals of the UN Decade of Healthy Aging. Today's launch of the platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Aging enables greater global opportunities for collaboration and knowledge exchange among stakeholder groups. 
and will serve as a critical resource to inform and inspire action and investment in the promotion of healthy aging, especially for the private sector. As global populations age, businesses will need to understand a varied and shifting diverse market and develop products and services to meet the needs of an aging population and can do so by committing to action in the areas such as the future of long-term care, the development of age-friendly communities, the professionalization of the care economy, and the support for more inclusive and equitable workforces by building inclusive multi-sectoral partnerships and collaborations that address the determinants of healthy aging and enable new partnership models and foster greater opportunities for innovation. And finally, by creating an inclusive future for all through the use of technology to meet the needs of the 50 plus population and accelerate growth across industries, enable new people to live healthier as they live longer. And all of these action areas are better enabled and scaled through the access to global knowledge and learnings to foster greater collaborations. The forum looks forward to continued action in this space now and in the future through engagement with this platform, this community, and our global network of stakeholders to realize the goals of the UN Decade for Healthy Aging. And thank you very much, Kelly. You know, as head of healthcare initiatives at the World Economic Forum, you know, you have a unique purview on the world. And so it's critically important that WEF is at the table, not only in these discussions, but we actually collaborate and partner going forward. And finally, we also have the privilege to have the participation of Dr. Vivian Welch and Professor Tracy Howe, co-directors of the Cochrane Campbell Global Aging Partnership. Um, and I'm sure many of you know these two prominent leaders in academia. And for the purposes of the statement, I believe that Tracy, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jane. And um, greetings from greetings from Scotland. I'm uh, pleased to see all of the uh, Greetings in the chat. Um, the Cochrane Campbell Global Aging Partnership welcome the launch of this knowledge exchange platform for the decade of healthy aging. The COVID-19 epidemic has highlighted the need for high quality, reliable evidence as an antidote to the infodemic and fake news. For almost three decades, we have been producing trusted evidence to inform decisions for better health. And over the last six years, we've been working with the WHO on producing high quality evidence to inform healthy aging. And we contributed to the baseline report for the decade. This platform being launched today will assist in providing trustworthy information as a go-to resource for accessing and sharing reliable information in one place. It's essential to make knowledge widely accessible and we applaud the team by launching this knowledge exchange platform at different events in multiple languages over the next few days. We translate our Cochrane evidence into over 15 different languages to make it more accessible and to reduce the linguistic barrier to global evidence-informed health decisions. Our plain language summaries help people to understand and interpret research findings and these are included in all Cochrane and Campbell reviews. Our Wikipedia project has added references to over 500 Wikipedia articles and has achieved over 29 million views worldwide. We recognize the importance of partnership working to achieve a common goal. And we seek to involve diverse sectors and stakeholders in the co-production of our evidence. These include the government sector, civil society, communities, citizens and caregivers, and academia. We have a commitment to health equity, while recognising that the environments in which we are born, grow, work and live strongly influence the opportunities available to each of us as we age. We use an intersectional lens in our evidence synthesis to understand what works, why and in what circumstances. The Cochrane Campbell Global Aging Partnership pledged to contribute our high quality trusted evidence to the knowledge exchange platform for the UN Decade of Healthy Aging. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Tracy. 
um, you know, the key words that I, I picked up throughout that statement was, you know, the interpretation. And so we find that the information that Cochrane makes available is accessible to all. And I think what we're also talking about is the transformation and information to policy effectiveness. Overall today, we've had statements from a variety of sectors which have demonstrated the commitment of the a united approach towards the decade. Before coming back to our roundtable participants for an in-depth discussion though, and reflection on diverse perspectives of knowledge sharing we've just heard, I do want to hand it over to hand the floor to Kazuki Yamada, who is the administrator for the decade platform. And uh, Kazuki, I just want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. You know, your leadership along with your colleagues, and this is not in my script, um, is formidable. And uh, I thank you for the way that you go about you know, informing us. Please tell us about the new decade platform, Kazuki, and how it can address some of the points about knowledge sharing that our speakers have shared today. And of course, please submit your questions. So the floor is yours, Kazuki. Thank you so much, Jane. Today, we're very privileged and excited to be able to launch the Decade Knowledge Exchange Platform, an online space where all stakeholders across the world, everyone, including the participants of this webinar, everyone across the world can use to collaborate with peers, colleagues, professionals, experts, and more to find, share, and produce knowledge on healthy aging, all in one place. We've heard from our diverse speakers from across sectors on the different ways knowledge sharing is important to foster healthy aging. Through the process of developing the platform, we've also listened to key stakeholders from over 80 countries to learn how we can best foster the collaboration required to make the decade a success through the platform. How can the platform help us all work together to exchange our knowledge, experiences, and expertise to improve the lives of older people, their families, and communities. The platform supports stakeholders to build collaborations for fostering healthy aging by enabling all of us to find, share, and produce the knowledge we need together with peers, colleagues, professionals, experts, and more in English, French, or Spanish. The platform's knowledge is organized across five categories that correspond to what we call the enablers of the decade of healthy aging. Voices, where you can find the stories and experiences of older people, their families and communities who are at the center of the decade. Resources, where you can find information about publications, databases, multimedia, events, commentaries and news about healthy aging produced by stakeholders all over the world. Connect where you can access a directory of people, organizations, and networks working to foster healthy aging. Innovate, which contains details about projects, campaigns, research, case studies, and other initiatives that aim to think outside the box to create new knowledge and interventions for healthy aging. And finally, support, which provides information on practical tools and training programs to help you with your work on the ground. Anyone, anywhere in the world can share their knowledge, experiences, and expertise to the knowledge types available on the platform. And the platform becomes more and more helpful as more of us contribute to it. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's imagine for a minute, you're a policymaker working for local government, and you want to learn more about ageism to design interventions to improve intergenerational solidarity in your area. You can go to find knowledge, click publications, then search for all publications that stakeholders have shared about ageism to find the knowledge that you need to plan your intervention. But having seen the platform, you also see now that there's a wide range of knowledge types that you can use, not just publications, to learn more about ageism and other aspects of healthy aging. So if you're a policymaker and you've learned now that you can do other things to learn more about healthy aging, you might want to go to databases and repositories to find other access and access other databases or data banks of knowledge on healthy aging. For example, the WHO aging data portal, or you might want to go to voices 
and listen to the stories and experiences of older people to find out what really matters to them. What if you're a local civil society organization that wants to learn more about how to become an effective leader for healthy aging? Maybe you'll go to find knowledge, training programs, and here you find a list of free online courses that will help you to get the training you need. For example, the WHO Healthy Aging for Impact course in the 21st century. Or maybe you'll want to go to organizations and networks to find other people and peers working in similar areas as you so that you can contact them. Or maybe you're a private sector individual that wants to connect with civil society organizations for a corporate social responsibility initiative. You could go to submit, connect, organizations and networks, and provide the details of your organization so that you can use the platform to connect with a wider network. Or you could go to submit, innovation, implementation projects, and share the details of your project itself so you can share the details of what you're doing and potentially collaborate with others through the platform. The possibilities of what we can accomplish together using the Decade platform are diverse and limited only by imagination and actions. Just tell us who you are and what you want to do, and we can give you some suggestions on how to get started. Academic, find resources, and you'll find some suggestions. Or keep checking back as we continue to add new features to the platform, like an online discussion forum, which will be hopefully available on the platform by the end of the year. The platform is for everyone and we're very excited to work together with you. We're looking forward to seeing what kind of knowledge governments, organizations, individuals, and others around the world will share with the global community through the Decade platform, and how stakeholders will use this knowledge to transform the world. Please join us on the Decade platform and share your knowledge today. And thank you very much, Kazuki, for that speed around the platform. I think really what you've what you've told us is that there are a tremendous number of opportunities, you know, to to talk about what we're doing, to sharing problems, but also to exchanging and to then using that information to help our work on the ground, as Caitlin from Help Age International demonstrated, but also, you know, at a government level and also in the public private sector, as well as the United Nations. But it really is behest on, on our organizations and those that know about this platform to start using it as the engine for change. Um, so thank you. Uh, we do now have the opportunity to um, talk to our participants at the round table and ask them some questions. And so I encourage you to you know, use the chat box and the Q&A function to load up your questions. But I would like to just start off with, you know, a more general question. And uh, perhaps if I can start off with um, uh, Miss Angela Mway and uh, Dr Niemi. So the success of the platform is dependent on all of us sharing knowledge relevant to healthy ageing. And there is so much existing knowledge in all of our countries. How can we really encourage stakeholders, you know, beyond government and beyond the United Nations to share and exchange that knowledge? So, um, Angela, would you like to just make a response to that, followed by Dr. Niemi? Sure. Thank you very much. I, I believe the platform is a great initiative because it's already created a space for everybody to share. And Kakumi also just said that it's open for everybody. So we should promote this, this knowledge platform, which will in turn support the implementation of everything we wanted to do, and including the 2030 Agenda for, Sustain for Sustainable Development. Knowledge sharing and exchange creates a community and learning culture where we learn from one another what has worked, what hasn't worked, and at the same time build on what has been shared. Similarly, seeking the active participation of all stakeholders in co-design of projects, policies, and outcomes pre presents an effective way to ensure their inclusion in the processes and in the outcome. For example, UN Habitat has started something that we call the communities of practice. And each focus area for which is important to us does exactly what this platform intends to do. And we want to reach out to, I mean, Kazuki, thank you for the demonstration. We will also use this 
platform to put our resources there so that you can learn from what we do and we learn from what everybody else do, does. As a final pot, point, I'd just like to mention our partnership with the GAP Older Persons Partner Constituency Group that has been working with us to focus on issues of the intersection of global aging and urbanization, which will be including exploring a way to use age-based analysis to inform the work that we do as UN Habitat. So this is, this is, this is the way I think we can encourage st 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 stakeholders to share and exchange knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. Dr. Niemi, from a government perspective, how do you encourage other stakeholders to be part of this platform? Well, uh, first of all, I have to thank all the speakers so far. I think very interesting elements has been raised up. And uh, as, a, as a small country with a quite a, uh, difficult language, I think uh, the language problem, which was raised by, by the colleague from Cochrane Institute, is very uh, particular. And, and of course, with these modern tools, with digitalization, we can get let of, a lot of help in, in these issues as well, that small, smaller language areas can also be covered by all this information. But uh, specifically for Finland, I, I think we have a long tradition also uh, the use of uh, non-governmental organizations. So a lot of our uh, older care and the information uh, available is, uh, is uh, produced by NGOs in, in Finland. And I, I think here one important element is to, to see the intersectional elements which were also raised up that uh, in, in many instances, uh, of course, we, the primary focus is how we, we help the lives of, of uh, elderly people, but how we are doing this. And for example, how we get more gender equality in the uh, caregiving uh, uh, professions and, and, and also in the family lives where in many, many countries, also in Finland, it's uh, quite often uh, uh, women who take the, the most responsibility and are not paid for their, their work. So there are a lot of uh, good questions we can share with the NGOs and, and try to get the, the good practices uh, from them and share them through this uh, platform. Thank you. And, and thank you very much, Dr. Naomi. You know, small Finland may be, but very powerful. When you look at the kind of data that you've been collecting, you know, across your history. And that's a very powerful position to be in that we need to learn from. I do like the, the prospect of though, you know, non-government organisations being a really critical part of this. I'd like to now go to a question from Emmanuel Asante, and that will be directed to Tracy and, um, and Vivian. Um, how do we encourage universities, especially in Africa, to prioritise ageing studies in their curriculum? It's a bit of a tricky question. So Tracy or Vivian? Are you with us? Hi, I will uh, I'll take the answer to that. Good, thank um, you. It's a, a very interesting question. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, and here's Vivian too. So uh, Vivian, would you like to take a lead on this? Well, I think it's a, it's a tricky question. So. Um, you know, Cochrane and Campbell Global Aging, uh, we promote evidence synthesis, um, including the, the voices of older citizens. Um, there is a sister organization focused on uh, education and evidence synthesis about how to promote different practices in education. And um, in, within Campbell, we actually have an education group that has uh, done some work on digital curriculum. But I think it's very tricky to encourage universities. I think the more we do to promote the decade and the importance and also you know, within uh, healthcare and education, the importance of older people as part of our, um, our society uh, is the best we can do. And this platform is a great step. Okay, any, any further comment, Tracy? Yeah, I think it's about ensuring that uh, ed educational programs are underpinned by high quality, reliable evidence. Uh, and I think that that's really uh, important as we as we move forward. But I noticed one of the um, uh, earlier speakers uh, spoke about the, the fact that many um, studies uh, exclude older people uh, from from that. And uh, that's something that we're, we're working hard to promote that. Uh, primary research should involve older people um, across all uh, areas to ensure that the, the research is relevant 
to um, the, the broader population rather than young, fit, healthy people. And, and look, thank you very much for that, uh, Tracy. Um, there's a question now, really, and it's around the situation that we're in now, and that is the COVID-19 pandemic. And I think it's okay to pause and say that um, we acknowledge the many millions of people who have died in this pandemic, but also those millions of care workers, frontline workers, families, friends who have supported one another. But, you know, the pandemic has really exposed the critical importance of policy and also, you know, how vulnerable populations, you know, are most at risk. So I'd like to turn to Caitlin and also Dr. Taki. Um, and ask you about, are there any reflections or lessons learned in terms of, you know, the, the importance of digital platforms and communication in this time? Um, and how can we use those lessons going forward? So, Caitlin, just start off with a quick comment from you and then go to Dr. Tacky. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll post. Um you know, on the theme that I spoke on earlier on voice, I'll post a, a report we did on um, COVID-19 and engagement of voice of older people. I think that what we see basically is that older people tend to have more limited access to digital technology, um, also lower levels of literacy, et cetera. And so what we're seeing is working is when older people's associations or local authorities or some other kind of community level verbal engagement is occurring. And that there are then people who are engaging um, on behalf of that group on digital technology for forums. I mean, one example I'll give is recently, I happened to see that the Federation of Older People's Associations in Cambodia, all the leaders from the different older people's associations were coming together to brainstorm how to overcome vaccine hesitancy and also barriers to access like transport. And they were convened by the Help Age Cambodia, which is one of the network members, local civil society organization. And they were discussing whether they could work with the government and the UNICEF on, and UNICEF on this. I think that's the kind of thing where, yes, digital technology is 100% possible um to definitely share knowledge but you need the language and the access and you need those people who can kind of transfer knowledge between um, levels and people yeah and and i think that's what we're really talking about in this important platform you know the translation of knowledge but the opportunity to connect at a very personal level and it really it is it's about the building blocks of relationships that are sustainable over decades that are ultimately going to improve the lives of older people. And while the decade goes from 2021 to 2030, that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. So Dr. Tacky, do you have any comments about the importance of um, digital platforms and communication, particularly in this time of COVID and, and what lessons can be learned? Are you with us, Dr. Taki? Yes, um, but uh, I couldn't turn on the video. So let me speak uh, without video. Please. Uh, thank you, uh, Jane and Kazuki, for your guidance and uh, uh, your nice presentation. Uh, regarding the lesson learned about the use of ICT in Japan, about 90% of individuals use the internet and about 60% of people over 80 years old use the internet as well. We could say that there is a foundation for fostering healthy aging through ICT. For example, using social networking system, we could engage young people in aging through the life course. However, we know that there is a disparity in information access especially among the older people. We must consider how to avoid the healthy, a health disparity due to the digital divide in information access. Yes. Talking about uh, policy and uh, uh, its related evidence, we believe that the experience sharing will be useful for countries that are seeking how to address healthy aging. Also, aging is still an area where there is limited evidence. Therefore, 
we hope that the platform will generate evidence for effective intervention and the policy formulation. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Taki. I'd also now just like to call on Alana Officer. Alana, I'm sure that I know that you're on the line. Just to respond to a question from uh, Vijay from Mar Mauritius. And it's about, you know, the conversation that's been going on, you know, for quite some time about, um, you know, um, old age is a disease. And I think it's an important thing to actually raise in this forum. So is the WHO right to state that old age is a disease? Could you comment on this for us? Thanks, Jane. WHO doesn't consider that old age is a disease. Old age and ageing are not classified in the international classification of disease as in fact a disease. So there is a misunderstanding there in terms of uh, WHO. We have no intention of classifying ageing as a disease. But if people are not happy with the wording that's used within the international classification of functioning, there are opportunities to change that. And we really encourage academics and practitioners to come together and propose changes if they would like to the ICD um, and very happy to share. I will share a link actually, if you'd like, so that people are aware of where they can actually post those suggestions if they feel that we can make improvements in the current classification. Thanks, Jane. Thank you very much, Alana. And I think it's a really important message and, and uh, you know, it's not misinformation, it's a misunderstanding. So thank yeah. you very much for Clara. So, maybe just to say it can be improved. So I would also, encourage people to contribute and get involved and help us move that classification forward. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. Hasn't one hour gone really quickly? Um, we've really, you know, set the scene for this launch of this incredible opportunity. Never in my lifetime would I have believed that I would be sitting here hosting a round table on the launch of the Decade Digital Platform for Healthy Aging and being part of it. It inspires me, it gives me great hope and optimism, you know, to build relationships to influence policy. So as we come to the end, today is another key step towards transforming the world. A word that's been used many times, you know, social transformation, transformation to a place where we are adding life to years, hashtag adding life to years. I wanna thank the audience. There's over 300 of you over 700 registered. So you are, um, you are now ambassadors, ambassadors to spread the word about this platform. Not only spread the word, but use it because that's the way that we can actually improve the lives of older people, their families and communities. Um, I do wanna thank the audience and the speakers for the rich and engaging discussion on knowledge sharing and collaboration to foster healthy aging. The four action areas of the decade and also the four enablers of the decade as we move forward to creating environments that enable older people to do what they have risen to value. I now would like to give the floor to Kazuki Yamada to tell us three ways to get involved in the UN Decade of Healthy Aging through the platform. Kazuki, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jane, for your excellent facilitation of the event, without which this would never have happened in terms of the conversation, the rich and fruitful conversation that we were able to sit in and listen to and contribute to. And most of all, thank you very much to all our roundtable participants for being here today and to our audience for joining us to share your valuable perspectives and insights on knowledge sharing, whether it is in the roundtable discussion or in the chat all of us coming together to celebrate the launch of the Decade platform in English, French, and Spanish. You, everyone, can get involved with a UN Decade of Healthy Aging and its knowledge exchange platform in three ways. First, please visit the platform at decadeofhealthaging.org to explore what others have already shared with the global community and learn about new features that will be regularly released through the course of the decade's 10 years. Second, Please share what you know and have experienced about healthy aging with others through the platform and build the collaborations we need to add life to years. And finally, third, spread the word on the Decade platform with your peers, colleagues, and networks. Everyone, 
everyone across sectors, regions, languages, everyone knows something unique and valuable about healthy aging because we all age eventually. And to improve the lives of older people, their families and communities, we really need to work together to see the transformations we want to see over the course of the decade. We really hope the decade will be helpful for you to foster these collaborations and draw on our collective knowledge towards creating a world where all people can live long, healthy lives. See you on the platform and take care. And thank you very much, Kazuki. And uh, be inspired, be bold, have courage, step forward and join together in using this platform to help drive the agenda for the decade of healthy aging. Thank you so much. Stay safe and stay well. Until we meet again.